The house actually has possessions and in those possessions comes memories. And working with our clients, those possessions can be quite painful memories. And so actually working with them in deciding which items are to be removed, we create a better environment for them. We work to create calm within the home so that they feel that there is a sanctuary for them to actually return to and they feel it is home and that they can start to love that house again. Um, and working with coaches and lawyers, the suggestions they put forward to their clients in helping them to move forward, um, we actually see that through. <laughs> first tip would be very much to be organised, just knowing where to attain the information that you need in order for your accountant to review. So for example, knowing where the bank accounts are held, how to get hold of bank statements, whether, they're, whether there's online filing or whether you actually have manual copies held at home, just very simplistic things, but being organised would be my number one top tip. Boeing works on the body in many levels, but in the case of somebody who is in the middle of a divorce, they're going to have a lot of pent-up emotions, and maybe not so pent-up emotions. Some people may actually be more uh, volatile than they usually are, but Boeing can help in all these instances, as well as bringing the anger out. It can also rebalance the body to um, make them calmer and not so volatile. Somebody who's in the middle of a divorce, or maybe they haven't got to the point that they're in the middle of a divorce, but they are in an un unhappy situation at home, very often they are very stressed because they know they need to make some sort of decision, but, but they can't bring themselves to make a decision. And again, through my own experience working with uh, various clients, I have found that Bowen has helped clear their mind and allowed them to make certain decisions. Okay, this divorce means the end of my life. This divorce means the end of my life. And the answer is no. It's gone. So how does that, how do you do that? Oh, well, how long do you want to be here for while I explain? <laughs> <laughs> the dummy's guide. <laughs> no, it's, it's going into the theta brain wave, yeah. supervising the change and then just checking to see that it's done. But so, I'm very fast, so, so you don't realise there's all that behind it. But it's talking to my subconscious. I'm talking to your subconscious mind. What I find amazing is you're going into kind of quite deep stuff and yet it just feels fine. It's all no, right, there's no do you feel the difference? Of, yeah, I don't, I don't feel uh, like I'm, I'm um, having to go into, deep yeah. into anything. It's, very, it's actually very calm the whole process mm. which is what really surprises me. You don't have to feel the pain. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> your, your unconscious yeah. mind will just recognise it for you yeah. and we will get shot of it yeah. with your yeah. permission. The fear, the betrayal, the lack of trust in yourself yeah. and in anybody else, the um, feeling that you're inferior in some way or wrong or um, just on the trash heap, whatever mm. it is. It um, makes a huge difference, and and so I mean a divorce is never easy, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be as difficult as it seems to be for so many people. So tapping is working on energy channels of the body, energy meridians in the body. Acupuncturists use needles. We tap to stimulate the blocked energy. Tapping is used by many people and by many professional people. Counselors, hypnotherapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, doctors often share EFT tapping because it is so successful to bring down the anxiety levels. The anxiety levels that you subconsciously transfer to your child. So if you're wanting to be more calm, confident and clear about what's going on, have a go at EFT tapping.
The problem with the breakdown of a relationship is you're often left with a feeling of having unfinished business, unresolved issues, things that you didn't say, things that you wanted to make clear, um, things that you wanted to rant and rave about. And the problem is that if you try to deal with these in everyday life, what might happen is that you moan to your kids about it, not going to be helpful for them, they need to feel positive about their other parent. You could end up by blurting some of the, the issues that you have, the angst that you have out when you're doing the handover with the children. Again, not a good idea, often happens. Um, you could end up by taking various forms of revenge or you know, trying to tell everybody, including all your mutual friends, etc., etc., his family, whatever. And the problem with that is that it can often get you into more trouble, really not resolve the issues, but just perpetuate them. So what I help people to do is, even if they're not in front of their ex, I help people to reach a place of resolution, a place of completion, if you like. And it's amazing how effective it is, even if the person that you're talking to isn't there, actually getting off your chest, and we've got some really, really good tips and techniques for doing that. And again, the forgiveness process is one of those, so that you're all clear, you're all straight, you've said your piece, you've said what you're still sad about, you've said what you think they, you added to their lives, you've said why you often got angry with them, you've said what you regret, perhaps. Now, the interesting thing is the person doesn't need to hear this. But once you've expressed it, it's then possible to move on and create a totally different relationship with them. Because it has to be a totally different relationship with them. You will always be connected if you have children. You will always need to communicate with that person. So I can help you to actually express what you still need to say. It's a little bit like having the last word, but in a safe and controlled environment. So it doesn't hurt anyone, it doesn't damage you and it doesn't damage your children. What's the difference between being a coach and being a mentor and being a therapist or a counsellor? Now a counsellor would help you to uncover what's happened in the past. So you might have some hidden issues from your childhood that have really sort of formed you and developed you and made you who you are today. Things that have helped have been kind of instrumental to making you who you are today but I've also been hindering you from moving forward but a coach like myself we talk about your future so my business and my passion is to get you into your future get you stop looking at the past talk, talk about maybe limiting beliefs that could stop you from moving forward what are those limiting beliefs Oh, I'm such a failure. Oh, no one's ever going to want me again. Who's going to love me after all my ex-husband or my ex-partner said I was rubbish, so I must be rubbish. And all those limiting beliefs that you, you know, that we tend to have, those gremlins that every time we're trying to make a step forward, they take us 10 steps backwards. I'll help you through that journey. It's a lovely journey. It is traumatic. Um, I'm not going to tell you, know, I'm not going to you know, give you sort of any illusion. It, it can be traumatic, but you will with me emerge on the other side better, bolder than you've ever been, reinvented, released, passionate about your new, you know, your new life and your new you. Well, I think the most important thing for couples to realise is that the impact that they're going to have on their children getting divorced is enormous. And all the research now shows that children survive divorce and adjust well if the parents act civilly and behave as friends. So the biggest mistake a lot of parents make is they get angry, rush off to lawyers, rush off to court and start a war. And I've had children actually come into my office and draw me their parents with guns shooting each other as a representation when I do art therapy with them of how violent and how angry the parents are at each other. So I think it's quite important for parents to realize that if you create a warring situation, your children are going to become victims of a war between two parents, both of whom they love and don't want to have to choose. So it creates quite unstable environments for the children. And if the parents actually realize that creating a, a harmony of separation and showing the children that if relationships don't work, 
you can move into two separate happy environments where they can see a happy mom and a happy daddy and create a situation where the family can work together in harmony rather than in such a, an angry, violent situation which then affects the children at school, it affects their friendships, it affects the parents going to work. Like for example, I had one um, wife who told the husband she can only see the children from 5 in the afternoon till 7. But he worked in the city and usually couldn't get home before 9. So he then had to ask for a leave of absence, um, well not leave of absence, an early half day every Wednesday to leave the office by half past three to get to the kids by five o'clock to be able to see his children during the week. And that kind, so of course he became resentful because it started affecting the impact on his job. Um, she didn't care actually because they were just, she was angry that he wanted the divorce. And they were just landing up with, eventually got to the point where one of the children actually came into my office and said I don't actually want to live with either one of them I want to go to boarding school and this little boy was like nine years old because he literally put his hand over his ears and said I can't take this anymore you know all they do is fight and all they do is yell at each other and daddy's always angry he has to leave work and mommy's always angry that daddy left and it just becomes this very uncomfortable situation for everybody so the children are unhappy, the parents are unhappy, the employers are unhappy. You know, it starts affecting everything. You know, output, income, um, promotions, bonuses. You know, the whole life of the family is then stuck in trauma rather than moving towards healing because the parents aren't at all. I've been there myself. Having gone through the separation with the father of my children, I know what it's like to lie in my bed at 2 a.m. wide awake wondering how I messed my children up for life and being a child psychologist didn't help. I thought that out of all people I should have all the answers but at the time I didn't. So I made my first priority to do whatever I could to look after the emotional well-being of my children to make them help feel happy in their own skin to help them trust that the world still is this safe, warm and loving place. Fast forward to now, I know that it is possible to have happy, confident, resourceful, resilient and all-round well-adjusted children after divorce. I know what it takes to turn the feelings of constant underlying anxiety where you're just feeling like I'm trying so hard but I'm just not sure if I'm getting anywhere to feeling at ease and confident and being able to say to yourself I know what my children need and I can give it to them I'm pretty much the parent I always wanted to be